Hi. Um, if you're still uh, quarantining at home or isolating uh, during the pandemic, um, I've got a project I wanted to show you, an art project that you can do at home that um, you can do by yourself or you can do with uh, your kids. Uh, kids, I'd say as, as old as eight, nine or older uh, would be about the right age to start doing uh, printmaking at your house. Um, today we're specifically going to be showing you how to do a, what's called lino cut printmaking or block printmaking. Um, and we're going to show you how to do it a little more sustainably. In terms of materials, there's some basic items that I would consider that you have to have to be able to make a linoleum block print. And then there's some other materials that uh, would be helpful to have but aren't necessary things that you absolutely have to have to be able to do this project. Uh, the first item that you're going to need is uh, linoleum. So this is um, something that can be purchased online uh, in a variety of shapes. Um, this is linoleum that's called, it's, this is the most, one of the most frequent kinds, it's called Battleship Gray. Um, this is unmounted, which means it doesn't come on uh, a wood block, so it's a little more bendy, a little more flexible. It's usually a little bit cheaper than the mounted stuff. This is the medium into which we are going to place our design and then carve our design, place the ink, and we'll use this block to make the prints. Um, we will also are going to need a carving tool. Um, this is a very simple, uh, affordable carving tool. This one's made by Speedball. Um, it is nice in that it comes with a bunch of different blades that will give you different size marks and cuts into your linoleum. Um, and it comes with five different blades. Uh, there are other versions of the same type of uh, tool that you can find online for fairly inexpensive. Um, we're going to need ink. Um, this is an oil-based ink and I would highly recommend using oil-based inks. Uh, they're a little bit better quality and uh, the cleanup on them is not as bad as you might think if you're used to, if you've ever done like oil-based painting in your house, the cleanup for these materials for block printing is actually a little bit uh, easier than what you would find from like a house paint. Um, another material that you're going to need is a brayer. This is a, this is a tool that you will use to spread your ink out and get it into the right consistency and then use it to apply it to your, your block and then before you uh, make your print with the block. Another item that you might need is a inking plate. This is a just a really cheap thin piece of plastic that you put the ink on and then you use your tool to spread the ink out and get it to the right consistency. You don't absolutely have to have this but I, I like to have it. Um, it helps me contain my mess and it's a little bit you know easier to plan the inking part of my project with one of these. Um, I also like to have a, a putty knife um, you could use a thinner one for like acrylic paints. You could use this one, which is for house paints. Um, it really doesn't matter. The main thing is just this will help you get the ink out and then spread it onto your inking plate. Once you've got your plate inked up, you need some way to get to apply pressure to get the ink to go onto the paper as well as possible. And this tool is called a Baron. Um, this is sort of a modern take on a traditional uh, Japanese tool that is that was used with Japanese uh, printmaking back in the in the day and um, this is just a tool that you can use to apply a good deal of pressure to get the ink to transfer onto your paper. Um, another item that you're going to need is vegetable oil and that's going to be for the cleanup which we'll do in a little bit as well as some paper towel. Um, tools that you might like to have around but that aren't necessarily absolutely necessary. Um, this is carbon paper. Um, you can use this to trace the design onto the block print. Um, this is very inexpensive. This costs like a dollar or something like that. And you can use this over and over and over again. Um, another thing that you might want is tracing paper, which allows you to capture the basic design of something. If you want to transfer a picture, um, you can use the tracing paper to get the, the outline onto the tracing paper and then put the tracing paper over the carbon paper and then get that image onto your block. 
Um, some people will be intimidated by this because it's an artistic project and they may think, well, I'm not a very artistic person, I can't draw. Um, and you really don't have to be able to. I can't, I can't draw, I've never been able to draw. And um, I've been able to uh, use portraits and pictures and being able to get those things uh, and print those. Um, so yeah, don't be intimidated. Uh, just just go with it. Uh, experiment and have some fun. Today, the design that we're going to print today is just kind of a basic, you know, take care of the earth message. Um, love your mother. Um, I took a very small image of the earth, satellite image of the earth, and, and traced the United States and South America onto that for the O in each of the words, and then just kind of traced out some basic letters. I'm not very good at doing lettering, so um, it's not as good as what like a real professional printmaker would do, um, but it gets the point across. So rather than do this on one large piece of linoleum, I'm doing it on three small pieces of linoleum. So what I do is kind of trace the sides of the smaller pieces so I can make sure to keep my letters in between so they'll come out on the block. Um, and then for the mother, because it's larger, I will I use a bigger piece to get that message on there. So once I get the design the way that I like it, um, the, the main thing that you want to do is put your design onto the block opposite the way that you want it to print. So if you want it to print like this so that it's legible as love, you have to print it backwards because once it is carved out, it's gonna be, it's gonna go down as backwards um, and then it'll print in a legible way. So, just to show you the basics of how to carve, we're just going to show you how to carve this block here. Um, one thing that I forgot to mention that it's very useful to have, this is that kind of material that you sometimes find under, uh, under a, a, a carpet or a, um, something to keep it from sliding. Um, this is very good, useful to have because you're kind of going to be kind of applying pressure to the, to the block as you're carving it and this will help it keep it from slipping. Um, there's a lot of blank space, negative space, onto this block, and so I'm using a larger uh, carving tool to be able to carve away more pieces of it. Um, what I'm going to be doing is carving away everything except for the letters, and then um, I'm going to be carving away the continents on the letter O. Um, the main thing that you want to do when you're carving is to always be sure to be carving away from you and as much as possible not have your hands uh, in, the, in the pathway of the carving tool. These are fairly sharp tools. Um, this material is firm but kind of soft and you can make it softer by heating it up a little bit, uh, placing it in a window, placing it on a heater, that kind of thing. Um, but when you're carving, these things do slip and if they slip and you hit your finger, it's a really easy way to cut yourself. So, we're just going to start here. Okay, so now we have our uh, finished we finished carving. Um, we've got our word carved out. Uh, we're almost ready to start inking. Uh, one thing that you can do before you start inking your plates is just take a marker, a uh, sharpie, or a marker with a longer, flatter edge, and just kind of rub it along the edge of your plate. And just to make sure that you've got clean edges, especially around this area here on the O with the globe, just to make sure that I'm not getting ink in these little areas or that if I am, it's not gonna pop up when we actually ink our plate and start uh, putting this on paper. So I've already kind of gone through this and done this one and it looks okay. Um, what we'll do first is um, do a little test run and then if we need to, we can scrape the, clean up the plates a little bit before we Okay, so now we're going to use our plate. Um, I've got just a ribbon plastic, piece of plastic.
plastic down here that is that I can use to spread my ink out and get it ready to go onto my plate before I put it onto the paper. So I'm using just a really basic green oil-based uh, printing ink from Speedball. Um, other options, this is uh, Gamblin, which makes some really nice um, block printing inks. These are all oil-based. Um, so, so I get that onto my plate. I'm just gonna spread it out a little bit with my putty knife. Kind of get it into this area here. You want to work it a little bit sometimes if your ink is especially cold and a little bit stiff. You haven't been using them for a while. So now I'm going to take my roller. I'm going to spread the ink out. So you can kind of hear that squishy sound. That's that's the sound that you're looking for. That means your ink is ready to go. And even though you can see through that to that permanent marker that's on there, that's not a big deal. That's not going to show up when we actually print our letter. But it's looking like we did a pretty good job on the carving. There's not a lot of unclean edges, so it looks like we ought to be able to go pretty much straight to printing without too many worries. So then I'm gonna take my block. I'm going to set my letter. If you don't want to spend the money for one of these, you can take something like a, uh, a large metal spoon or a large wooden spoon and you would flip this over and rub it on the other side. But it's the same principle, we're just applying as much pressure as we can. moment of truth. Not bad. Okay. Um, so that's our first word. This is a little bit unclean, so we might, um, for the next one that we do, we might want to trim off a little bit of where that extra green showed up around these edges, but otherwise I think we're pretty much ready to go. What you're going to want to do then is keep printing. If you want to do an addition of 10, in addition to five, you want to print all of the one, all of the green loves. You want to print all those at the same time. Um, and so do each one of the, the pages that you're preparing. All right, we've got our first plate printed and on the page. Um, so now, since we've already got the green out, we're going to go ahead and ink up uh, the mother plate. And put that on the page and maybe we'll do the word your as a different color. So just to get the spacing right, I'm gonna just put the other plate there and then So it doesn't look too bad. There's a couple of 
spots there where there's a little dust or something on the plate that we need to clean that off. And it looks like the ink wasn't quite applied all the way through. So I'll use this as a test page for each phase. Um, but now I'm gonna finish inking up the mother plate and print a couple more. And now we're ready to ink our final plate here. way to do a two color print. Um, this is the end product right here. So after we get it printed up, we're going to set it someplace for it to dry. I just use a string and some clips here in the basement. All right. We're going to let it dry for like a day or two. All right, now that we're done with our printing for the day, um, we need to do a little cleanup. Uh, in terms of what we need to clean up, the plates you can just leave and dry and then you can ink them whatever color the next time that you, if you want to use them again. Um, the nice thing about using foil to get your ink ready is that when you're done with it, you just have to pull it up and throw it away. You don't have to do any cleanup besides that. The bad thing about foil is that it rips really easily. so. Uh, we were kind of lucky that it didn't rip on us tonight. Um, and then what we're really looking at cleaning tonight are just the uh, brayer here and our putty knife, our, uh, paint knife, and uh, this inking pad. All right, so um, probably the easiest thing to do, uh, if you have gloves, it's kind of nice to have gloves for this part of the process. We're just gonna pour a little bit of oil onto our inking plate. And it's just regular vegetable oil. And I'm just gonna kind of move that around and then we'll start to get that ink up. As much as possible, you want to make sure you, of course, keep the oil from going down your drain. Uh, having that sort of increase in our drain helps to clog them up, um, which we don't want to do. But as you can see, that we have to do a little more cleaning, but that's basically got the most, most of it off of there. All right, and that is the very basics of how to make your own Linoleum block print. Thanks for joining us.